Welcome to SpunTales.com, where we spin tales from around the web. This episode, we continue the story, The Falling, by J.D. Phillips. An advanced copy of The Falling was provided to Spun Tales with permission to read on air. Be sure to follow her on their socials at facebook.com slash author JD and twitter.com slash JD underscore author. Time passed in blurs of noise and motion once he got himself up off the floor and into a wheelchair. He was glad to be away from the metal tables and cubes, but found the bright lights of the hall beyond too bright to take without holding the blanket up over his face. No one seemed to care that he'd hidden himself beneath the blanket as Randall pushed the wheelchair toward the nearest elevator. Ben had volunteered to remain with the cubes and Dunro had excused herself stating she needed to use the ladies room, though no one really believed that she truly needed to relieve herself. She'd asked Randall to get Garhart to the labs before she left in a tone that told she really wasn't asking at all, and so Randall had reluctantly complied. They passed a male stepping off the elevator as they moved inside. Another worker like Randall, but not involved with the cube room. Carhartt peeked through a small gap in the blanket long enough to see an Asian man with too large of a grin staring in his direction. The man stepped into the doorway so the elevator couldn't close, leaving Randall no choice but to force a less than cheerful smile as he acknowledged him. He called the man Ron. His skin crawled at the mere mention of the name. Hey Danny, Ron said. Is this the one? Randy, Randall replied. What's that? My name is Randy, not Danny, Randall replied. And I don't know what you mean. Ron laughed. He completely disregarded what Randall had just said and nodded towards Carhartt. You know, the walking dead guy? Randall sighed wearily. Fucking Ben, he muttered. Heard he broke out of the freezer like the Hulk, Ron added. He happens to be sitting right here and doesn't have time for your bullshit, Randall replied. Now get out of the way so he can go. Ron again disregarded what Randall had said and leaned forward and attempt to meet Carhartt's gaze through the gap in the blanket. Hey man, what's up in there? He asked. What are you hiding for? The lights bother his eyes, genius, Randall replied. Can he not speak for himself? Ron asked. Hello? Man, if I'd just come back from the dead, I'd be whooping it up like a badass. No, you'd be tired and confused and in no mood to deal with assholes, Randall said, moving forward to give Ron a light shove. Stick your hand back in to stop the doors and so help me, I will let him bite you. Ron surrendered and stood clear of the elevator doors, still staring at Carhartt all the while. You're a dick, Danny, they heard him say as the door closed. Uh, sorry about that, Randall said. Carhartt wasn't sure what the apology was for exactly. He was grateful that Randall had chased the loud man away. It had been hard to focus on anything other than aching pain Ron's voice raised within, but he nodded all the same. There were many things he wanted to ask, both about the imminent tests as well as the place in general. But the sudden drop of his stomach as the elevators lurched forward made him forget every last one of them. Don't let that worry you, Randall said as the light flickered overhead. I'm not the biggest fan of elevators either, but this one's a good one. Good one, he repeated, frowning as the lights flickered again. Never known it to break down on anyone, Randall replied with a nod. It's time to change the light bulb, that's all. Just try to relax, okay? Okay, he said, unsure how he was supposed to do that when the entire room was moving. He watched the lit panel above the door as it moved from left to right, first highlighting B, then 1, before settling on 2 with a ding. His stomach returned to its original position. The doors opened up before him, granting him a view of green signs with white arrows posted up on a white wall. X-rays, MRIs, CAT scans, ultrasound. The words printed up on the signs were the tests Dr. Dunro had spoken of. He understood that, 
but something about this floor made him feel colder than the cubes when Randall first pushed his chair out of the elevator. Something was off here. Something made him feel off, to the point where he suddenly wanted nothing more than to get back inside the stomach-churning elevator. No, there's too many, he whispered. What's that? Randall asked. Hey, whoa, whoa, don't, don't freak out on me, man. Save that for after I drop you off, all right? Drop off? Yeah, with a nurse or... You know what I mean, Randall said. He craned his neck in order to stare at Randall as best he could from his chair. Randall stared back down at him and made the mistake of direct eye contact. Aw, oh, god damn it. With the puppy eyes? You really don't know what I mean, do you? You don't understand any of this. Carhart furrowed his brow, trying to come up with an answer Randy might like, but it was too broad of a question. Look, like the doc said, these tests won't hurt. They're just going to look you over inside and figure out how messed up you got when you hit the water. That's all. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. I mean, you got yourself into the chair fairly easily, so we know your back's fine. That's always the biggest worry, right? Is that right? Randall flinched, visibly struggling not to voice his immediate thoughts out loud. Carhart heard him regardless and elected to follow Randy's lead and refrain from speaking them out loud. Randall didn't much care for a conversation. He was too awkward, impatient, but he wasn't simply irritated by Carhartt's responses. Randy also found them somewhat creepy. And creepy, Carhartt gathered, was not the sort of thing people here enjoyed. I'm sorry, Carhartt said. Randall shook his head. No, 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 don't be. They're going to give that head of yours a good look, too. Just see how cracked your egg really is. My egg? Yeah, your head. My my head is an egg? No, I... Are you fucking with me? Carhartt frowned again, trying to reason if Randall considered it to be a good thing or a bad thing to be fucked with. Sometimes yes, oftentimes no. It was just too difficult to determine for certain which might be the case today. I don't think so, he replied. Randall sighed heavily and shook his head, silently reminding himself that this guy had been through the ringer today. Carhart wasn't exactly sure what that meant either, as he didn't recall interacting with any ringers, but the thought seemed to restore a good deal of Randall's patience. Listen, you just gotta get through the tests, okay? Then Dr. Dunro will know what to do to help you, Randall said, moving to push the chair forward again. Dr. Dunro won't be coming back tonight, Carhart replied. Randall arched an eyebrow. That woman's got a heart of steel, kid. It'll take more than whatever the hell it was back there and the morgue to spook her off. What was that, by the way? She hurt you or something? Yes, it did hurt. Is that why you're scared of the tests? Because I don't think they're going to need to touch you that much. Carhart remained silent. Anyway... Once they're done with the test, you'll get to rest a bit, Randall said. Imagine the cops will come to ask you some questions eventually. Probably take your picture to see if anyone recognizes you if you're still drawing a blank. You're young enough, decent looking. There's got to be someone out there missing you. Randall's attempts to reassure instead made Carhartt increasingly uneasy. The thought of someone out there missing him, looking for him, filled him with a sudden dread so strong he shivered despite the warmth of the blanket against his chest. Was I... was I bad? he asked. The question caught him off guard nearly as much as it did Randall. He didn't know why he'd asked it. He couldn't remember ever doing anything, much less anything bad, but the words were out now, so he couldn't take them back. Well, I, uh... not that I know of, Randall replied. Why? You remembering something? He shook his head. If I did, would cops still come? Randall gave a genuine chuckle at that and nodded. Wrecked head, but still knows to distrust the cops, huh? Don't blame you, but yeah, pretty sure they'd come no matter what. Kind of have to when folks take a swan dive off the bridge.
routine, right? Right, he whispered. Thank you for listening to SpunTales.com. You just heard The Falling by J.D. Phillips. Remember to follow her on her socials at facebook.com slash author jd and twitter.com slash jd underscore author be sure to check us out on facebook as well facebook.com slash spun tales and twitter.com slash spun tales if you're an author and you'd like your story read on the air contact us at info at spun tales.com spun tales is a heathen digital podcast if you'd like to create a podcast or be hosted on a podcast, send us a message at info at heathendigital.com.